everyone, it's Christine with Momspiration412, founder of EduPlay, and welcome to our weekly show, Motherhood, Challenging Yet Rewarding. And we have tried a new time, so this is now 9 p.m. We're trying a few things differently this week. It's also um, a new name, so we've changed from Momspiration Monday to now Motherhood, Challenging Yet Rewarding. And there's a lot of reasons for these changes because number one, it's difficult for you know bedtime and 8.30 was kind of rough. So let me know if this is a better time because it's nine o'clock, the kids are probably in bed. I just got mine to bed. So um, I know it's a little bit you know different because of what the situation we're in, but hopefully this is an, an easier time for all of us to pop on. And also I've changed the name because a lot of what we do is all, obviously everything in this group is about motherhood, you know, and we all have those challenging moments, but we also have those rewarding moments, you know, and I talked about a little bit before, but that's a big reason why we changed the name of the topic or the name of the show. Okay. And the other part of this is I want to start coming to you more with these real life topics, such as potty training, such as behaviors, and how do we, you know, adapt to different things, and maybe why are our kids acting a certain way? Um, other things are such as eating, you know, and maybe eating in a sense where let's try to get our kids to try new foods, maybe eating in the sense as I'm nursing and I don't know what to do. Maybe you're trying to make baby food. Like, so I feel like this is such a big capacity of what we can start doing and really just coming to you with these motherhood topics. And that's really the whole reason for all of this. So, um, please keep the topics coming to me. I think a lot of, um, I got a lot of good feedback today and I have a lot of good ideas. Um, so I'm going to keep them coming to you. Okay. And I really want this to be a place for us to share what we need to get. You know, we need, we need something and I want to be able to have that for you. So welcome everyone. Thank you for hopping on. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Oh, thank you, honey. Um, and Laura and Sarah and Heidi and Deanna. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much. So um, I've been going live every morning. Give me some thumbs up if that's something that you and your kiddos enjoy, you know, the live edu play videos in the morning. Um, but, and I've also been trying to give you guys some ideas for your kiddos um, because I know, you know, the day either can go really long and you're running out of ideas or it could go very fast and you're like, how did I lose the day? You know, so it's, you know, just trying to find, um, find things to do sometimes, you know, and I think a lot of us with the weather as crappy as it is right now here in Pittsburgh, it is so cold um, and it's miserable and it's gray and rainy. So trying to find ideas and activities for the kids, that's what I'm here for you. And I want to be able to help you with that. So I'm going to show you some of the things, some of the things I may have talked about before, but I'm going to show you some other ideas um, and maybe some things about a sensory bin that you didn't know. So for me, a sensory bin could be anything. Okay. For me, and I will show you some of the things that I use for sensory bins and what a sensory bin is, it's just a bin. Okay. It could be a bin. It could be a box. It could be a container and I'll show you, I have it kind of buried down here, any kind of container. And if you put toys in it for the kids, like a specific theme or a specific item, um, sometimes that's all enough. Like that's enough and they're excited about it. So for Alex's birthday, I took a bigger, um, bigger tub, you know, and it was a little bit longer and I put all of his Paw Patrol in there. And that was like so cool. Instead of them just being on the floor, they were now in this container and they loved it you know, so that was something. But now to make it even more of a sensory bin, you really are adding things that they could like manipulate, okay? Um, a big thing is rice. So we just did this, we just, um, I did a rice one for um, Cinco de Mayo, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see there's some rice still in here and some glitter, there was glitter in the box too. So I'm gonna show you guys, I got lots of stuff here, so I'm gonna be moving around. Um, I'm going to show you another idea I have. So there's these containers that are about this size 
and those are good for like one one kid um, but if you have more like this is a better size and you could really put a lot of things in here and I'm going to show you one of the sensory bins so for the rice sensory bin that we did um, I made it with farm animals because that's what we talked about on Friday, I think it was. So it was farm animals. So I took that sensory bin and I put rice in it and I took their like um, little people farm animals and I let them play in it and they loved it. You know, it's just something different for them. Another thing, so this is another size container that I've used. You guys can kind of see it's a little bit bigger. Um, I've even used longer ones. If you've ever come to my live events, um, I've used a much longer one, kind of one that you would like push under the bed with like wrapping paper in it. And in those ones, some of the ideas I've done for Dr. Seuss, I can think of one. I did all kind of different pom-poms, um, different colors, because it related with the one story, Take Me to the Zoo, and it had all the spots. Um, I've done one where we put penguin poppers in it, and it was again pom poms, and they had to take those penguin poppers and they pop the pom poms. So, just something to kind of get the kids excited. I did a red, white, and blue one. It had red, white, and blue pom poms. It had any, any red, white, and blue items that I found around the house um, blocks. Um, I'm trying to think. I know I did like necklaces, beaded necklaces. And obviously, this is all dependent on this, the ages of your kids. Um, you want to make sure they're not going to put these smaller items in their mouth. So you would want to have bigger things in the sensory box with them, um, which I wish I would have brought one down. But for the little, the younger kids, what I do is I have a, um, a bottle and it, it screws on, the, the lid screws on really, really tight. So then that way I could put sensory bin items in it. And then that way they're still seeing everything that the, the bigger kids get to see only we don't have the risk of choking for them. So that's another option. Um, yeah, I don't have one here. You could even use a water bottle and just glue the lid on. And then that way that's something for them, okay? Let me see, I'm gonna see if you guys have any comments. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Grandma. Hi, oh yes, dried, dried beans. Hi, Alicia, hi, Brittany, hi, everyone. I do have a bean one, I'll show you, Kelly. Kelly, what are some of the things you put with the beans? Because I'll show you one that I have. So another one I did for rice here, you guys can kind of see. Um, this one I've had for a while. Um, I, put, I put things in it like rakes. Um, let's see what else is in this one. Little scoopers. And then also in this one, you can hide things in it. So you could do like a, like a I spy kind of a game, okay? Or like, what is that? Um, Mm, yeah, like the I spy, where you put things in a container, you bury them, and they have to find, you know, so many red blocks. They have to find so many whatever, you know. And this one was just like blocks and colorful things. You could do graphing with it. So they have to find all the yellow and put them in a pile. And then after they find all the yellow, then they have to count the yellow. So that's an option, too. Um, you could also, this one has like a little fish in it. Um, you can make a theme out of it. Anything you do could be a theme. Um, so like I said, I've done Dr. Seuss, and that was all a theme. You could do fish. If you're doing like an ocean, you want to do an ocean theme, get anything in the house, any kind of toy, any kind of bathroom toy, any, anything, and throw it in there, and now it's a whole, new, a whole new toy for them, okay? So that's one with rice that I've done. Oh, like a sandbox. Yeah, shovels and buckets. Exactly. The other one, which I showed you guys um, a picture of Alex playing. Um, this one, again, is an, a bin that I have. And this one actually closes a little bit better, so then that way they just can't open it. Um, this one I do have in here. I have a tablecloth for them to lay down, to put down on the floor. It doesn't matter because it gets messy anyway, so... It's good or bad. It really doesn't matter. But I try, right? I try to put a tablecloth down. This one I gave them um, their little hats. So they have little construction hats. Again, a theme. They love it. They have fun with it. And then Alex goes and finds all of his construction. There goes all the beans. All the construction cars that he has. So here are the beans. So what I did is I made it like um, 
I made it like gravel, okay? So I took white, black, and the brown beans um, and just filled it up, filled this bin up. But there's like construction stop signs, there's little construction vehicles, there's diggers in here. I throw bowls in, you know, spoons, anything that they, cones, anything that they can kind of like dig around and make a mess with, they love it. So like I said, um, I try to put things down sometimes or I try to like limit it and put it on the table or in a specific area. It makes a mess no matter what. Typically. Um, so I think sometimes you just have to kind of make sure you're in that right mindset that, you know what, they're going to play for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever it, it can be. But you know what? We're going to have a mess when we're done. And that's okay. That's 15 minutes that you got to do whatever you wanted, you know? So sometimes that's all, that's all worth it. All right. Let's see. Who else? Hi, everyone. Hi, Kayla. How are you? Okay. I know I've showed you guys this one before. This is one of my favorites, and this one's pretty easy to do. My kids are now moving on to more actual Legos, but this is one that I did in my classroom, and I made Legos, like a tower or a picture or whatever it could be, and it could be blocks. It could be little Legos, like where you make a picture and they have to you know, do the same thing. It could be words. It, it could be anything. And you could take a picture and you could show them on their computer, whatever. This just happened to be what I had in my room, okay? So then I made these picture cards and then I gave them all the Legos that they needed in this bin, okay? This bin has extra Legos in it now, but all the Legos were in here. So then it was an easy thing to just kind of grab and say, here you go, you're gonna do this Lego bin and this activity, go for it, you know? And what I found now, like in the classroom, it's a little different. What I found with my own kids, if you make it a race, it's like more fun, right? So if you say, okay, if you can build three of those pictures before I sweep the floor, you know, whatever it may be, or while I teach Ella, whatever, you know, her words or her letters or whatever it may be. So sometimes I make it a race and then they love that. Okay, so a couple more independent activities that you could do, kind of on the same guidelines. Oh, I'm gonna get to the other one too. Um, a pan, make sure it's metal though, okay? So a pan and your letter magnets or any kind of magnets, okay? This can kind of work the same way as that, um, the Lego bin, okay? And you can make pictures or you could just make cards. So I told Ella today what we're gonna do is I have sight words for her. And I'm gonna put that sight word, you can even tape it right here. Tape the sight word right here. And then you could take these and then they would just, they would uh, match the letters to the word, okay? So what's another activity? Um, this I think is a good one for the car too um, because then they could put this right on their lap and they can manipulate the magnets however they want, and then they put the magnets back in here. Obviously, you kind of have to have the guidelines of, let's make sure we put these back in here, you know, whatever maybe. But um, that's another good one to do and to play and practicing the learning aspect of it too. Hi, everyone. Hi, Marcy. Hi, Jessica. How are you guys doing? I'm going to grab a quick drink. So another one. Another super simple sensory bin that I thought of as I was coming down, taking their bath toys and either putting them in a bin or even putting them in the sink and letting them stand at the sink, okay? They love it. And then add some soap. I mean, they, they just are so much fun because now there's bubbles. Now there's water. They're excited. They're playing with their bath toys. And, and, it's, and you can even use toys that are like, okay to get wet that aren't necessarily bath toys um and they can wash them you know they even have like these letters and numbers that they could practice because they stick on things once they get wet they could stick them somewhere on the table wherever you know sometimes it's taking those toys out of where they're used to seeing them and put them in a whole new way and a whole new, you know, a new way that they could use them. And then it, they're, they're excited about it. So something that we're doing is we're going through all of our toys, you know, and I pulled out toys that are so old. I mean, they are way too young for the, 
the toys are too young for them, you know, and they're like, oh, we want to play with this and we love this and we want to play this. And sometimes that's a whole nother thing too, is like rotating your toys. And all that means is you have so many toys out, you know, right now you can see my toy room is full of toys. But if I were to take some of those bins and you can see some of those, that blue bin there, let's say right here. Um, if I were to take some of those bins and kind of put them away, and then I bring them out in a couple weeks. Now it's like a whole new toy and they're excited about that. So that's something else you can do in rotating your toys is just that. It's just putting a few toys away, having you know two or three choices out, more than that, but a few choices out and then they're excited about those ones. And again, I've said this before, sometimes it's overwhelming for the kids. Sometimes when you say go in your playroom and play, it's very overwhelming for them. So if you give them a specific activity, now they know what to do and now they know what to work on instead of like, what am I going to do? What am I going to play with? What am I, you know, here's something here. You have two choices. And this is what I did one morning. So I'll show you one morning, which was heaven. Okay. They came down. I don't know what happened that morning. It was such a nice morning. They played up in their rooms until the lights on their clocks turned. They came down and they said, okay, mom, what can we do? And I was like, what? Like I'm working on the computer, I'm reading, I'm whatever, you know. And I was like, all right, I have some ideas for you. So I will show you some of the ideas I pulled out for them. They picked one of those ideas and they sat there and they played for another 15 to 20 minutes. Does that happen every day? No, no. <laughs> like I said, that was heaven one day. I don't know what happened, but I was enjoying every second of it. One of the activities, and I didn't pull this out that day because this one could turn into a messy activity, but again, it's one of those that keeps them entertained and occupied. Now, I know I shared this on the page. Um, it's literally plastic straws and these little connectors, and then they can make all kind of things. So the one I shared on the page, apparently people were having trouble with shipping or whatever. I got these on Amazon. Um, and they, I had no problem with them, no problem shipping or anything, but let me show you guys a picture. Oh, they might not have a picture in here. Uh, maybe not. Okay. Um, but these, these straws, they bend, so they make balloons with them. I made a car for them for one of their birthdays where it was just like big and then they can get inside it. You can make a box. So this is one of those things that can really spark their imagination and it's just plastic straws, play straws. So that's something that was exciting for them. Here are some of the ideas and the activities that I gave them. And these, you may have something like this, you may not. These are just things that I had in the house. So this is an I Spy preschool game. And this is good for a lot of things. So it is just like a puzzle piece. And she didn't have to read for this. I'm sorry, the light's shining right on, right on it. There you go. Um, she doesn't have to read because the pictures are actually right there. Okay, so I spy a monkey in a bright blue car. So then you have to find the puzzle piece that matches what you what the pictures are there. So this was a good one that she can kind of look, um, didn't need me to read it to her, and was able to match them up and kind of do I spy. So she really liked that one. And that was one that she um, she did completely on her own, and she was really enjoying it. Another one that I I got for them are these the blocks, and I'll show you what these are. So these blocks here have cards that come with them, and they really enjoy doing these too. Let's see. All right, so there's like a bird, and I think it tells you, yeah, it tells you. Like that's an easy one, three stars. So then what they would do is they would find the wooden pieces, and these ones are nice because they're wooden, so they're a little more sturdy. Put the wooden pieces, and then they would build the bird. You could do it on the floor, obviously. And then you would just keep building the bird. So that was another good activity. All right, so if you guys have any other activities, let me know some of the things that you guys are doing with your kiddos um, to kind of keep them engaged, excited. Um, I've got two more, and then I'm gonna share with you guys some activities that we're gonna do this week. So these here are like buttons. Okay, so they are just little buttons here. And what this one is, is you put the card on top and then you would find the right color they would find it. 
and they would push that button in. And I think I have too many things there. But they would push that in and then they would just match up the colors. So it's good for color. It's good for that fine motor skill. This one's another good one that's kind of like an easy, they can just kind of do it themselves. Um, so that's a good one. And then the last one I have to show you is another one with pattern blocks. Um, sometimes just those wooden blocks, it's just something fun for them. And if they have a picture to kind of see, it allows them to kind of make something with it, you know? So these ones are definitely a little more challenging, okay? So this is kind of like taking these pattern blocks and making it into the whole, the whole pattern. And like I said, very challenging. This is something that we have to do together. Ella can do it a little bit. Um, she gets to a point where she doesn't want to do it anymore. You know, it's, it can be frustrating. Um, I'm trying to find one that's pretty simple. There's some that are a little simpler, but most of them are pretty, like that's a little tricky, you know. Um, but it's another good one. Or like ones like that, that's a little simpler, you know. Even ones like that. But they really enjoy it. Even they just like enjoy playing with the blocks. As you can see, they it didn't get put back correctly. Um, but, and it's just wooden blocks, and they just kind of, put them where they belong, you know, in the, in the square. So that's another one that they enjoy doing. Um, but these are just a few things that you can do for your kiddos. And like I said, the biggest thing with a sensory bin is just kind of taking toys that are different for them or in a different area, you know, like their bath toys, but now they're in the kitchen sink or their pool toys. You know, I was, going to get rid of our bath toys and I thought these are perfect pool toys you know so I'm going to keep using them so um and just different things like that and if you want to think of some if you want to try some learning um activities like I said you could do letters you could do words and another thing you could do is you could take that rice and you can have them just write with their letter or with their fingers or even like a pencil and they could write the letters or even like a paintbrush, you know, so all of these different ideas. Um, let me know, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if they're good ideas, if there's something that's new to you and that you guys didn't think of before or something that you've done and it's worked for you guys, because I love to hear them. Um, one of the other ones when we posted about sensory bins is um, the fairy garden, which was really cool. So it was like black rocks or black stones or the beans, it could be beans, and just the little fairies in it and little shovels, and then they can make a little fairy garden in a sensory bin. So moving forward, we are going to be doing, like I said, more things like this, more um, real life motherhood kind of topics. And not that, you know, we've had wonderful, wonderful guests on and there's so much valuable information in there, but I want to make sure I'm giving you guys this valuable information as well. So it'll be a combo, but it'll be more of this kind of information as well as once a week, I'll be posting some sensory bin ideas. We'll be posting some independent ideas, independent play ideas, um, recipes. So if you guys saw today, we posted a recipe um, and we're going to spread it out more often. We're going to be emailing things more often and our website is going to be very it's going to be more robust. So it's going to have a lot more information there for you guys to go to because I know that right now social media is a lot. I know that you can get on there. You can totally get lost. And I know that you're not seeing things that you want to see. So if you guys do want to see stuff from Momspiration, just keep popping back in that group. There's a way to pin our group. So it's at the top. Um, there may be a way to make it a favorite, a favorite. I don't remember if you can still do that. I didn't see that option. Um, but there are ways to kind of keep the ideas forefront because I know there's so much stuff out there and I am trying to get you guys some valuable information, trying to help you out during this time. So if there is something else that you guys are truly looking for, please reach out to me, either post it here, post it in the, um, in other comments or send me a message. Um, because I, would love to help you guys during this time, okay? Hopefully, we'll all be able to start getting outside and we'll be able to start just really, you know, burning off some of that energy that we have and just starting to see each other um, in a safe manner. So um, I hope this was helpful. Please let me know. If it was helpful, please share with me some of the things that were helpful. If you found value in it, please share it with some other mom friends and let them know about our community and welcome them in. So. 
thank you all to that all that have done that for me already and for the group and just thank you so much so remember guys just know that I'm here for you know that I'm always sending you so much love hugs happiness and health have a great night guys bye guys <laughs>